Welcome to another epic show. We empower people and inspire change. And here we are again to talk about the crossing to Greenland, right? <laughs> that was a big. Uh, that was a big moment crossing to Greenland. Mm-hmm. We left. Do you remember the, t- the name of the town? Kikushuk. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't remember. Huh? Uh, it's Ki- two p- two parts. Kiki. Tashwak. Tashwak. Kiki Tashwak. Kiki Tashwak. Okay, now it's perfect. <laughs> Kiki, Kiki Tashwak. Tashwak. <laughs> um, we left there super early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Well, no, we didn't leave super early in the morning. We woke up super early in the morning. We were checking the weather, remember? Yeah. And we were, um, we had a plan to wake up at four. I remember this, that we were in two different rooms. You said, okay, Misha, you're going to wake up at a certain time. Yeah. We check the weather, see if it's good, if it's worthwhile going for it or not exactly and uh, it looked like four or five i think around good, four right? in the morning i looked out the window and i got super excited was well, blue because it was blue sky <laughs> it was just incredible and i was like this is our opportunity so i got mm-hmm. you up and i was like okay we got to get packed up we got to get going and mm-hmm. it was this realization of like we're not going to get going as fast as we want to because there's a lot of things we got to have breakfast still pack up mm-hmm. all our stuff we depend on transportation. We, yeah, transportation. It was all to the cold. Airport. We could have walked, is, but we had a lot of stuff to, to haul. This was like the and Arctic. Then, right? Everything yeah. was frozen. It was May. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was supposed to be nice. Yeah. But anyways, and uh, so by the time we had all that stuff done, there was these layers of fog that had sort of developed. There was still blue sky. Mm-hmm. It was almost not quite like this, but it was, there was, it was definitely blue sky. But then there's these layers, and I was looking around mm-hmm. going, this is not as good as I was hoping for. And so we got packed up and going and the weather was good to begin with. Mm -hmm. But as we got cruising along, we figured that it was deteriorating. And what was your idea about the Davis Strait? You were expecting to see some water, right? Yeah. Well, that was very interesting because (laughs) uh, when we flew in, we could see that the bay was icy. And I thought, oh, Mm -hmm. it's just the bay. Yeah. And and so we get flying and we flew for about 45 minutes. And everything was white. And it was just white. No no chance that you were going to have broken open to ice. Other uh, than some good cracks that helped us. Yeah, the good cracks were contact nice. with the, the terrain because there were huge cracks on the ice. Yeah, exactly. Like highways. And and it was interesting because about six months prior, when I was thinking about this this hop over to Greenland, there was a mm. big milestone or a uh, big thing in my mind that I wasn't willing to go across unless mm-hmm. we had blue sky. Mm-hmm. Because we had looked at some of the videos about um, uh, friends in high places yes. and stuff like that. and. And the, cr- the crash that he had into the ocean mm-hmm. and the weather that they dealt with. And in my mind, it was crazy that they were trying to do any of these hops with even moderate weather. Yeah. Why would you do that? Why would just you do that? Wait. You're just going to go with only blue sky. Like, why would you fly with anything other? Like, you're doing this massive four-hour hop yeah. over the ocean. And, and it was interesting when we're there in the moment with this it's so massive schedule in front of us yeah. and looking at the two-week forecast, you know, it was kind of this on and off okay weather. And it was like, no, of course we're going to go with this moderate weather. And mm-hmm. it was like, it was a, a total mind shift for me. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. And so it was, it was, it was super interesting because mm-hmm. we went and mm-hmm. the weather wasn't fantastic. And no. as we flew in, I think we flew about 45 minutes before we decided, no, we need to turn mm-hmm. around. And, yeah. and the we weather. We were unanimous about that. Remember? That yes. We're looking at it and say, no, it's not going to work out. Let's you go back. You and I at this point right? were 100% exactly. on the same page. So let's Yogo go. Yogo in the back seat was a little <laughs> different. Yeah. He was, so it, just to describe, the weather had sort of come down, 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 down to a point where we were flying at about 200 feet. Mm-hmm. The clouds were still comfortably a high enough above us. Probably a 500 foot difference mm-hmm. between sort of the surface and the clouds. Mm-hmm. And, um, but the visibility wasn't great because of the white snow mm-hmm. and the clouds, there was just not great definition. It was and you'd have these gluing up at the horizon. Yeah, kind of like gluing up, exactly. Yeah. And so we looked at each other and said, forget yeah. it. Like, Let's go back. Our threshold at this point was very high. We, yes. we, we didn't want to have any sort of risk whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So we said, forget it, because we don't know what's coming still ahead. Mm-hmm. We don't know if this is continuing to get worse. Mm-hmm. But when we... That last moment when we started turning around, Diogo sort of looked in the distance and said, no, guys, it's getting better. It's getting yeah. better. Let's not turn around. I think he was also looking more of one of those, one more of those cracks. Yeah. Remember? There was another big, big crack. crack. We could see some good water, yep. like a channel of water. Exactly. Exactly. And that, those, those, those channels helped us keep, keep reference. Yep. We look at those who are sometimes parallel, just going and just finding a point that we could 
stick to the um, the horizon and see yeah. that little spot that mm. was some intersection of those channels and it helped us a lot. Yeah. So we, we got another one of those. Yep. But right when we turned we around, knew, there was a, a nice big long one in the direction. But that the we problem were was that we knew that there was still like two and a half hours to go. Yes. And, and there was no go- way that we wanted to risk that. It was going up and down. Yeah. And if you we don't want to be in a situation that yeah. none of these <laughs> will exist any longer, and then what do you do? Exactly. Yeah. So we turned around. We headed back, and it took us a while to sort of get Diogo on the on the same page. But mm-hmm. we, you and I, were very yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. We were totally unanimous on it. No, there's no way no we're way. gonna do it. So when we got back, we're looking at the weather. We got fueled up and stuff. And then we realized, because Diogo was very adamant that, no, no, guys, it was getting better. Was getting I saw better. it. I saw it. Why didn't we continue? I, exactly. It was so good there. So we looked at the weather, and and we were like, you know what? I think Diogo was right. right. I hate to admit it. But that right where we were, because we did some calculations on distance, how mm-hmm. far we had flown. This is because of windy. We, we look at yes, the windy. We're looking at windy. And, and it and looked 45 like 45 minutes, minutes in, will open up. Boom. That was the edge of the fog bank. And mm-hmm. then it was going to open up into this mm-hmm. beautiful blue sky. Mm-hmm. And um, and when we looked at it, it was only meters, but it would go like it would it would um, gradiently get better from like 500 meters to 1,000 meters to 3,000 meters mm-hmm. to 6,000 meters and then wide open blue yeah. sky. And so we said, ah, maybe we should just go give it another shot, right? And so we did, and and we got to the exact same point. Mm-hmm. The weather was exactly the same, right? Drop down, and we continued this time, mm-hmm. and and it slowly got better, and, and then it got better, and then it got worse again. About another yeah. half an hour or so, or so in. So now we're like an hour and fifteen minutes in, hour and a half in. We get to our north turning back point. We're getting close to our north turning po- back point, but it didn't get bad. It just mm-hmm. got worse than what we had because it probably went up to 1500 foot mm-hmm. ceilings or so and then it started getting worse again and we're looking at it we're going mm, mm-hmm. well now we have this weather report showing us that it's going to get better and so there's this this, this continuous feeling hope. of like okay well okay. maybe we should just continue now yes yes and, yes, and we yes. did yeah. and and it it got worse but it never got horrible there it, there was times where the ice just wasn't breaking up. I don't know yeah. why it wouldn't. Yeah. And and so this if it was just open up in water because this, of yeah. the the fact that we had all um white gray and, on the on the on the on the clouds. And there right? was patches where it would break up and it would be all all, all black. And because mm-hmm. remember, we'd look at the clouds up ahead and we'd go, There's something different up there. It's it's mm-hmm. better or worse, or something's going on. And then we'd realize we'd get there. It was an there illusion. Was, there was a Come patch. It was yes. an illusion. A yes. patch of, of black water. Mm-hmm. And then it would it, that <laughs> shadow to the sky yes. would totally yes. change now the look Now I remember of the those sky. illusions. Yeah, that was the, very interesting. We had different illusions during the trip. Yeah. This one was very particular because of that those cracks yes. that were making uh, different contracts in the horizon. Yeah. And we thought that was a specific opening in the sky or something like that. Exactly. But it was not. And, it and was we thought, oh, yeah, the sky's opening up. It's no. opening up. And then we get there and go, no, the sky is just darker, but it's not opening up. Yeah, yeah. And and so that was very interesting. But eventually, so we had a couple of thoughts. Both you and I were kind of thinking, okay, what's our contingency plan? We always want to have a plan B. What's the worst case like, scenario? Yeah, exactly. And worst case was we would pop the floats, mm-hmm. pull out the dinghy, land on the ice, mm-hmm. and then get out of the helicopter so that if the ice broke, it wouldn't tip us over or something, mm-hmm. and then get into the dinghy mm-hmm. and then just wait and yeah. wait for better weather We did discuss this uh, flying. Yeah, we talked well, about it. So that was kind of our backup mm-hmm. worst case scenario pa- once we got past our no turnaround point kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, but and then, then the weather it, starts improving. But then it broke up and, yeah. and it got better and better and better and better until all of a sudden now the, the snow had broken up. Mm-hmm. We're most of the way through our, our journey. Mm-hmm. We're in the last 45 and minutes of the journey. And we finally see good water. And there's good open water good ocean and water. blue sky. Yes. And I remember that feeling. You were talking about this earlier. I yeah. remember this feeling of seeing that, that yeah, horizon. See and I think the you silhouette. saw it first. Yeah. Yes. And you're like, this land. Is that a silhouette of land? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. But it looks, if it is, it's exciting. Yeah, right? After doing this trip, we now um, oh. comprehend a little bit better the people that are astray in the middle of the ocean. And they're oh, trying to find a, yeah. an island. <laughs> and just like they're, you know, they're, they're salvation. Yes. And they, they see illusions. They see things they're not. Yep. And then once they see real land, they go crazy, right? Like, let's oh, land. Just a little piece <laughs> of land. And we saw that in Greenland. Like, that let's was, land. That was let's an land. exciting moment. <laughs> Going through the weather that we did. And then now it's like, 
I can see it. I, I can tell there's definition. Mm -hmm. That's definitely land. And it became uh, clearer and clearer. It became so beautiful. Yes. That landscape. Because uh, a Greenland, at least the, the parts that we flew on, yeah. it's very mountainous. Yes. And it's, uh, it's glaciers, it's peaks, it's cliffs. So there's a lot of definition of the terrain. Yeah. And arriving at Lusat, it got the the the, the sky got clear, blue skies. Yeah. So the contrast with the icebergs in the water it was, was one of the so, most beautiful so things nice. I've ever flown yes. in. Yes. In my career, mm -hmm. like yeah. it was so pristine. And um, we were, th you know, I mentioned this a couple times where there's a few places in the on, in the world that mm -hmm. we flew to. I'm sure there's many more, but that we flew to where you feel like no human has ever touched yes. this spot. Yes. And that's a they special They got to have feeling. a lot of those in Greenland. Oh, that's a special feeling because it was like I'm maybe one of the only people or one of the few that mm -hmm. has ever touched this area, yes. you know? Yes. Yes. And man, Greenland has some spots I want to go back there for sure. Yep. Like do yep. some more exploring yep. around there. Yep. It's so so we flew into Lulisat and We should go to we should, we should go back to there. We should. It's 120 hours from here. It's not bad. Isn't it? It's not far. We calculated that. Yeah. 120. Is it? Uh, yes, I think round trip is 120 hours. Yeah, round trip. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so beautiful those icebergs, man. We wanted to land on the icebergs. Yes. Which that was that would have been our moment. That would have been our opportunity, except that we hadn't cleared customs yet, mm -hmm. so we weren't legal to actually touch down there. No. Which I don't think anybody would have cared now. But I don't at think the, so. At, at that the moment, moment, we thought it was very serious. Yeah, because Greenland had these really big restrictions mm -hmm. of. Like they had this big checklist of the you instrumentation have this, you, you need have in the aircraft, the survival equipment mm -hmm. that you need. In and Vancouver, remember that when the planning, we went and bought uh, yeah. specific stuff just for Greenland. Exactly. And we made sure that the checklist was complete. Yes. And we were a bit, we were, I wasn't, I wouldn't say intimidated, but we weren't, yeah, we, we were, were concerned. unsure of how the greeting that we were going to get. I expected mm -hmm. the customs guys to come out. Very and serious and looking at everything. Serious, Okay, guys, uh, we we need to see your full mm -hmm. list of everything. Show us your sat phones. Show us your your winter survival gear. This complies. Everything. This is not complying. Exactly. And uh, we had to negotiate. Your, 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 this <laughs> instrument isn't in <laughs> compliance or whatever. And I was I was a little worried. You're ready for that? I was yeah. hoping that everything was going to be okay because we ticked all the boxes. Yeah. But we got there and they were. It phenomenal. was so easy. They were so easy. <laughs> they were really welcome nice. to Greenland. <laughs> they checked our documents. Yeah. Okay, you got your documents. Great. Yes. Welcome to Greenland. Yeah, and yeah. and it was like. This is it. You know that landing. I was looking at uh, a vlog, uh, the vlog uh, recently, and yeah. uh, uh, we met there Jorgen, yes, the person that was introduced by Peter, the ATC guy, was wonderful to us. And, and you had been in communication with him a little before bit. that, exactly. Yeah. And then another guy came over that Jens. I just realized. Yes, Jens, that we I realized that sometimes you don't know how important a certain person is going to be in your life. And for us, he was extremely important he was five days later. Yes. And it was interesting because um, when Jurgen came over, I was like, I was connecting the dots. Okay, this is the guy that we're supposed to meet. Mm -hmm. But then this other guy comes over very friendly mm -hmm. and, and almost acting like he knew us. Yes. Or like he was supposed to be there meeting us. Yeah. And I was a little confused. Like, who is this guy, Ruben? He like, was briefed by, and, by and Jorgen. You were, and you were sure. chatting with him. And, and then he wanted to exchange business cards. Yeah. And it's in the vlog. It says, yeah. okay, you have a business card? Yes, I have a business card. Yeah, yeah. They exchange business cards. And we were in contact, in intense contact, five days later. We didn't yes. know that was going to be exactly. you know, you, so useful. Yeah. He, so, he worked for Air Green, Greenland and also has a... A, charter, a tour operator, a tour op or company and, there, uh, yeah, and exactly. We met. And he knows the terrain very well. So we go to the hotel, and the hotel is phenomenal, uh, Hotel Arctic, and uh, it was it was just a, an amazing experience. The view from our room and from the dining hall and everything, mm -hmm. everywhere that you you spend time in that hotel, you're looking at this bay of icebergs, permanent uh, which sightseeing. <laughs> yeah, which we didn't realize, but is constantly shifting and moving. When we talked to people, mm -hmm. they said, "Yeah, it's always moving." And we noticed that after hours of being there, we'd look at it and be like, wait a second, the that iceberg is over there over now. There. <laughs> and, and that's totally shift. And then we, I, I time lapsed and you could see all yeah, the icebergs all moves, moving around the right. bay. And it was like, Constantly. this is always different. It's always mm -hmm. beautiful. And, and it's never the same. And so. Oh, the more you talk about it, the more I want to go back Oh, here. man, do I ever want to go back there? It just <laughs> felt, oh. <laughs> you know what? I'm getting two senses mm -hmm. right now, which is okay. actually very funny. I'm getting a sense of the pristine beauty, mm -hmm. but I'm also smelling in my no in my nose right now the smell of those sled dogs. You did, I know you know that and the, you and Diogo smelled them. I went never went and checked them out. You never did. So I have no idea what the smell was. Oh man, is. when you walk by, those dogs stink <laughs> so bad. You didn't even need to get close. Like is they it? just 
oh, they had this I never, horrible I smell. I never smelled them. And oh man, it's it's bringing back memories <laughs> okay. now. But that's where the term uh, a, a dog sled came in. Oh where yeah, you started yeah. calling me a dog sledder, <laughs> <laughs> a sled dog. Yeah, no, a sled dog. You know why, right? Because you're always going to go, 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 go. I just want to go, go, but go. The sled's like not ready yet. Dogs. Wait a second. The exactly. sled is not ready yet. So that's where the that term started, and, yes. and it kind of was. It because became an enduring term. It was fun. Yeah. But um, but anyways, yeah. So we spent five days there because when we first arrived, we had this this idea of. Well, maybe even today, mm -hmm. because the the sun doesn't set. Maybe even today, we could hop over the uh, the ice cap because it was blue sky. You were dog sledding, and right away I was dog sledding. <laughs> and 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 we so we got a, a weather report from the the briefers, and they said, no, 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 yeah. there's no chance. There's clouds over the ice cap. You're not going to make it. I will um, never forget. She said when I called her. Yes. The weather briefer. She said, yeah, and it's severe turbulence. And yeah, I told to you, the severe south turbulence. of us. And you you said, did she, did she say severe turbulence? <laughs> I said severe turbulence. Yes. <laughs> Okay, we're not going. <laughs> no, there's no way. Because we thought, okay, well, maybe we could go down south to Nook and let's let's get at least a little bit further. Right. And it was just before Nook, yeah. north of Nook. So we had to exactly. go through the, those severe, the, the, that severe turbulence to go to Nook. And, and the turbulence, and it, we started realizing how bad it was when um, uh, cruise ships were being canceled. Mm -hmm. People were being stranded. In flights. In the hotel that we were at, the Hotel mm -hmm. Arctic, and then down in Nook. All the flights in Air Greenland were canceled. Mm -hmm. Everything was canceled. So it was almost like for them, it was like this state of emergency. It was it was yep. uh, interesting. And come on, guys, this was like middle of spring. You know, we, yeah, <laughs> the weather really beated us everywhere we went. It right? did. It was so everybody um, was our grounded. Peter had an amazing trip across Greenland yeah, because he, he flew goes, over the ice oh, cap. Oh, when I when I went, he oh. briefed me on it. He said oh, Greenland was easy. Yeah, it was beautiful. easy, guys. No well, ice cap. Pop up over the ice cap, and, and it was great. So nice. And he went back recently, and he got to experience a little bit of the and weather. He came back to us. That's a good. Yeah. You know, I can understand now. He exactly. got really bad weather. As I get to now. I got so, now. we had a challenge because going around the very southern tip of Greenland. Greenland is mm -hmm. massive, you guys. Mm -hmm. Like beyond comprehension. When you look at it on a map. It's easy to just zoom a little bit the wrong way mm -hmm. and look at the island and go, oh, it's just an uh, it's just an island. Like it's, but then you you compare it to Iceland. It's like a continent, and like yeah, Australia. It, it is a continent. <laughs> it's like Australia. Yeah. It's massive. <laughs> so when you picture going around, you have to actually not just look at like, oh, okay, yeah, just around. You have to actually measure like the distance, mm -hmm. and it's extremely. And if for any reason, you would have to fly by the shoreline. Yeah. It will be impossible because you go inlet in, inlet out. Yeah. No, fjord in, fjord out, and you just keep on going, going, going. Yeah. It'll be several times the uh, the, uh, the length of the trip. Exactly. You have to do that because exactly. it's so rugged, the terrain, and there's so many um, irreg irregularities on the on the geography of, of Greenland. Yeah. And the town that, that we had went to, the southern tip of Greenland, uh, uh, oh, wait a second. Oh. Gonna, I, I know it. Wait a sec. Nazaswak. Nazaswak. Okay. So you go there, and then when I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, we'll just hop across the little tip at the bottom, and then we'll <laughs> just a little and tip. then we'll start going up to Kulasuk. It's just like 200 miles and, and of ice. And you kept telling me, no, we can't <laughs> hop across this, right? And I was like, no, 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 it's not that high. Like, we can just... We'll just hop across, uh, and, and then we looked at it in detail. And you're right; like mm. it was the same thing. It was it was a mini ice cap. Mm -hmm. Like you have to go up to like eight thousand feet and go over this little tiny ice cap that doesn't look like much. And on later, the map. when we had to um, haul the fuel, we yeah, saw that. We saw that, yeah. and and you had to go around that mm -hmm. and then back up again, and that added about another hour to mm -hmm. the whole trip. Just do that. And, and it doesn't sound like much, but when you're dealing with a tank of fuel, our mm. max fuel was five hours, 15 minutes. And when you went around, it was about 550 nautical yeah, miles. It was impossible. So, so we had to find a, a way yeah, to no refuel. Way. And we were sitting there in a loose hut mm -hmm. thinking, okay, we can't go flying across. No. So we have to go around. Yeah. But now we have a problem with and fuel. And you lost sleep over this, didn't you? Yeah. we. I really had you know, a bad time of sleep every single night because... Mm. I was trying to find solutions, and then I I remember this guy. I called this guy uh, that we met when yes, we landed, yep. and uh, you know he we started exploring possibilities. One possibility that we discussed both of us was sling line the yeah get a barrel of barrel, fuel from uh, from it. Air Greenland and then sling it. Out. You know what? No, 
if we had done that, it was not going to be good. Really. It wasn't going to be good at all. No. It wouldn't have been great either. That because day, as soon as you sling line, you're mm. you're slowing down probably to <sighs> 70 knots or so. Man. So it would have made that journey that much longer. It would have, so have been extreme. Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, somehow I got this simple, obvious solution. <laughs> I told you this, right? Yeah. I was sleeping like almost midnight. Yeah. And it just kind of hit, yeah. hit you. No. It's we need jerry cans. Jerry cans, <laughs> so simple. <laughs> but the what problem with jerry cans is typically when you get a jerry can, it's like a twenty liter jerry can, and so they take up so much space. Mm -hmm. And and so we thought, no, 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 this isn't going to work. But when you called Jens about it, he said, no, no, no I can get you these Some certified hundred liter yeah, jerry cans, bigger ones. And we're like, oh wow, two of those would be exactly what we need. Yeah. And we knew that we had to leave Diogo somewhere. Yes, and that was and that was creative these. thinking. It was thinking yeah. outside the box that you'd have to leave Diogo, fly out to this remote location, drop the fuel, come back come and get back. Diogo, mm -hmm. and then and then go and fuel up. Mm -hmm. And I think we're gonna leave the 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 podcast here. We'll we'll pick it up on the next one because mm -hmm. the, the next refueling has so much details. Is is like one of the big milestones that we'll remember forever on yes. this on this trip because it was so intense. It was. It, we set ourselves up for the biggest day of the journey mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll just leave this one off with basically saying that on the Sunday when we left, mm -hmm. we arrived at the airport. It was about 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. I think we got into the helicopter, started flying around 4.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. and set off on the biggest journey of the, the trip, whole entire trip, the entire trip. And, and, and still planning it was, possibly to cross to Reykjavik. Yeah, that was huh. a part of the hope, huh. the dream that we'd huh. get all the way to Reykjavik, Iceland. Yeah. And um, and it was m emotionally and physically the mm -hmm. biggest drain of, it our, was. of our trip, I it think, was. for sure. So let's leave it there, and we're going to pick it up again on that big journey. Details on refueling oh, after. Oh, amazing. <laughs>